Hello, folks. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to today's session. Uh, Suresh, sir, over to you. Uh, hi. Uh, Meera, you want to switch on the recording? I did, sir. I just did. I already did. Oh. I was waiting for you to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. No, I, I thought uh, I lost your connection, but I think it's the reverse way. Uh, so, uh, welcome to all of you. And uh, today's session, as uh, you all know, is going to be about Raga Alapna. When we were talking about Sangatis, uh, we said that there are two things that, you know, we get criticized on or, you know, people make fun of Carnatic music. One is the repetition of the lines, saying whether the Bhagavadar has forgotten the lines. And the second was the Tadarinana part, right? So this is the Tadarinana part. What is the Raga Alapna? So Raga Alapana basically, is, so the Raga Alapana basically is about how you project the Raga using your own Manodharma. And you build a structure for the Raga. So there are two aspects we said earlier. One is a pre-composed aspect, which is the Kriti and the Sangatis. And uh, the Manodharma aspect, which uh, we saw was a Nerevel and Kalpana Swaras. And Alapana is one of the most uh, important parts of a concept. This is where you try to give color, shape and everything to the Raga in your own terms. So what we will do is I'll first give it to uh, Meera and she will uh, talk about it a bit. And after this, after we hear the first Alapana, then we will go discuss more things about it. Over to you, Meera. All right. Um, is my voice audible? Uh, yes, Meera. Oh. Okay. okay, so uh, like Sir mentioned, we have seen uh, two uh, Manodharma or improvisational aspects so far. The Nerval, which is the uh, taking a line and improvising on it, a uh, line from a Kriti. Second, uh, the Kalpana Swaras, which is singing the syllables uh, to a line um, with different sorts of patterns, different sorts of approaches. So in both these cases, there is a, I, I, I said that the Raga is the most, uh, it, at the end of the day, the Raga should shine through. I said that. Um, and But we also mentioned that there is a Tala or a rhythmic aspect to both uh, the Nerevul, because it is a line of a, a song. And uh, it, so it follows a particular rhythmic pattern. Secondly, the Kalpana Swara also has to fall within, uh, you know, a Tala cycle or uh, it has to come back to that point. So these two are uh, uh, tightly bound by rhythm as well as the Raga. Um, in this case, the Raga Alapana that we are going to discuss now is, um, as we call, it does not have a strict meter of any sort. You won't find a Mridangist or a playing along with the Raga Alapana and you will not find the uh, singer or uh, singer because they show the talent. So the singer will not uh, be showing the talent in this Alapana section, obviously because there is no specific meter to it. So. Um, different people sing these differently. There are many parameters that go into uh, how long or uh, how elaborate a particular raga ala, alapana. Some it is also called as ragam. Ah, he is singing the ragam, which sometimes also means uh, the raga alapana. In Tamil, we say ah, our ragam partner, varadi ragam partner. If it is said like that, it means he sang the raga alapana of varadi or whichever raga. So, um, and like sir mentioned, uh, people often use these syllables, Tadari Nana and all that. Uh, I am not very sure of the origins of this. Uh, it's uh, worth exploring, I guess. But for now, what we will do is uh, we will quickly listen to a short uh, Alapana and uh, go, go from there. I'm just sharing my screen once again. I hope. I guess you yeah. are able to see my screen, yeah. Yes, yes, Meera, yeah. yeah, that's a kataya kataya. Okay, this is in the Raga Kalyani, uh, which you all know. 
and uh, Ranjani and Gayatri. One of them is singing the Alapana now. Ranjani. So kindly listen to this. Uh, yes. Sir. <laughs>
we wanted you to listen to one full alapana uh, basically because meera would then tell you what are the elements that are going in into making this alapana one question i have seen people asking is okay if it is kalyani the notes are the same and how much can you you know each person can sing wouldn't that all be the same similar and all that so an example here would be like uh, let's say some hundred painters are given three colors to paint and a canvas and they are told to paint some abstract uh, painting right just patterns and what they want now you can rest assured that all hundred people will be not painting the same thing because it is as per their wish so some let's say you give somebody a blue and a green and a uh, yellow or something somebody would make the yellow part more brighter somebody would make the blue brighter or somebody would tone down some of the colors and they could e- uh sir can you folks hear me i'm i'm not able to hear sorry sir okay can you hear me sir uh, kind of dropped your audio okay oh is it uh, would were other able to hear me or not no sir nobody now you are now we were we are able to hear you ah okay okay so no i was just saying that uh, when you ask like uh, given the same notes of kalyani won't everybody be singing something very similar i was just saying that if you give some 100 people yeah only we, four we colors we lost you when uh, you were talking about painters uh, different uh, uh, correct so i i'm saying that different painters would paint it differently and you can be sure that 100 different canvases you will see the only thing you will notice is that they all seem to be painting with the same colors so that's exactly what happens in kalyani we will know it is kalyani but the kalyani that i think this is uh, ranjani who sa- sang here will be very different from the kalyani that balamurli sings will be very different from the kalyani gnb sings and very ca- different from the kalyani that sanjay would sing we all know it is kalyani but the way each one proceeds the colors that they show and the patterns that they show could vary a lot so you won't find two raga alapanas being the same because the manodharmam will be very different though they are using the same notes it's the same kalyani you will not mistake it for anything else and yet you will see lots of different kalyanis all around now i'll give this to meera so that she can then you know tell her views and also tell us how the raga alapana in this case had proceeded right um, so to add to what uh, sir said uh, ranjini akas uh, kalyani probably won't be similar to her sisters also <laughs> and yeah. uh, what a kalyani that she sings today or any artist sings today is likely not to be very uh, similar to a kalyani they may sing next month so um, it 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 depends on so many things uh, the artists uh, frame of mind what they going to so, uh, going to sing next so for example uh, let's uh, analyze this a bit so if we see this particular uh, uh, track right um, it's about nearly 25 minutes uh, which which is um, kind of like not very long 
because uh, usually the main sort of uh, pieces people this is no, not a hard and fast rule but if you look at the kacheri format that many people follow uh, mostly the main piece of the day tends to be like 45 minutes plus usually um, in a say a two and a half to three hour concert so in this particular uh, thing they have done only a 25 minute thing which means it's a slightly shorter what we uh, popularly call as sub main uh, so i think that's what's been sung here so also the kirtanai is a, it's not a very big kirtanai so all these things uh, keeping those in mind she has sung the alapana if you look at it for about 6 minutes so uh, why am i saying all this because uh, artists plan uh, the tend to many artists tend to plan these things because we live in a, a time crunch so 3 hours means you have to finish the concert in 3 hours so artists plan these things so i will sing this uh, for about they'll have a, a with experience they'll have a sort of a ball park okay this feels like i should move on now then uh, so if you notice she first starts very very slowly then uh, then maybe uh, you know slowly she picks up the pace now i just uh, and then you saw her uh, uh, doing very very fast uh, you know those brigad type those up and down sort of uh, things in the middle also so i just told you there's no rhythm uh, how come i'm saying fast slow and all here uh, what i mean by that is uh, relative rhythm um, i've heard uh, uh, you know senior with once mentioned that even in araga alapana there is a there is a pace to it uh, by that what they mean is they don't mean that okay it is sticking to a particular rhythm like one two three four that sort of thing but uh, there is a clear way in which the phrases move so that is gama padani so that is a that is the same phrase can be sung that sort of phrase can also happen so uh, uh, the pace the pacing basically differs even within a same phrase so that is one thing that i want to point out she starts out very slowly um, and then slightly uh, speed in uh, speeds up things and then uh, it goes to a very fast so typically when people are hitting the higher notes um, and they after a bit of sanchara the password for today sanchara is like uh you know kind of uh, revolving around some key notes some key phrases after that they tend to do these faster brigad type uh, up and down sort of uh, that sort of thing uh, not a trained vocalist so uh, excuse my uh, badly done brigads but yeah uh, 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 that sort of thing so she does quite a bit of those um and then she uh, when she wants to finish it she slows things slowly again again things get slowly uh, slow down and they come down uh, to the lower part of the octave um, and uh, finally she comes to a stop uh, and it is very evident where the stop uh, comes so she makes it make sure that the audience is not confused uh, as to whether she is uh, stopping there or not so it's a very well done sort of uh, alapana and uh, one more thing is uh, the violin following right why why is the violin always following the vocalist um, okay so um, a lot of times um, okay one reason is um, when they are doing a, a standing on a very high note uh, ah, 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 ah. so ah, that sort of thing uh, sometimes uh, some vocalists tend to you know want some sort of a support from uh, the the violinist for that 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 is one i have noticed another is phrases right um, okay so i'll give you an example here um, okay a uh, better example a a a a so the the and the tail of all these phrases was the same 
so you knew i mean uh, at least in a if a good singer sings it you will know that the phrasing ends the that sort of ending so it makes it clear that okay uh, the idea the sub idea is ending there now she is going to sing an extension of that idea uh, and then probably elongate it a bit so anyway so what i'm trying to say is that tail thing uh, tends to get accentuated by the violin playing okay the phrase is ending here so you also get time to digest and if you're listening to you know without any gaps it becomes like too much um, it, it's just like uh, uh, speaking with pauses and uh, not like breathlessly speaking that sort of thing it also helps the singer to catch a breath so multiple things going going on there so just wanted to point that out as well um since we spoke about this briga fast passages right uh, one of the key people who pioneered this way back in the 30s 40s 40s 50s i guess uh, was uh, g n balasubramaniam so he sings these super super fast sort of uh, uh, phrasing uh, sir i'll play that yes please yeah this is again another kalyani uh, but that's okay we love kalyani i guess yeah He's already singing faster faces.
If you had observed, uh, GNB is supposed to have been the pioneer of this method where you go step by step up the uh, scale. That is, uh, if you can rest on Ri or Ga first, uh, do Sancharas over there. Sancharas in the sense, the movement over there, right? So you come up, as uh, Mira was pointing out, to the tail end would always be, say, you end back at Ga or Ri Ga. Uh, and uh, you, you do a lot of work around that area then you go up to say the panchamam or pa and then do certain uh, again sancharas around that pa so maybe you end up ma pa or whatever and then you go up higher so you could have seen that in the initial cases he was in the lower reaches and later on uh, towards when mira pointed out the sancharas uh, he was in the higher reaches so that's a step by step development are uh, you hear that a lot even Hindustani music also, they, some of their garanas do that, where they go, they stand on a note and then, you know, uh, keep expanding around that note, then go the next note like that, they climb higher. This is one way of singing. Other way of uh, doing it could be completely phrase-based, that uh, you are not really revolving around one, but you are singing a lot of phrases. Now, in the phrase-based one, again, uh, it depends on the imagination of the uh, uh, singer and how they take it out. Um, Nadaswaram and all, you'll find a lot of such uh, phrase-based uh, alapanas going on. That is what I wanted to tell. Uh, I'll let Meera continue on this. Right. So this step-by-step, uh, -step, note by note thing is, uh, uh, in my opinion, it, it works really, really well for a raga like say Kalyani or a Todi or um, like a Mohanam, Hindolam, that sort of thing where uh, there's a bit of uh, symmetry as well as, uh, uh, I mean, while these ragas may, uh, you know, trace their origins to slightly older periods, uh, they are still, um, what do you call them? You can still... Uh, uh, reduce them, or I would call it reduce them, but you know, kind of explore them in a note by uh, note based fashion. Uh, but there are these super old ragas, which some of which we have seen, like uh, Ananda Bairavi and uh, uh, some of the yeah, Varali and all that, which uh, which are pretty old. So they, they, uh, I have already explained this, their gamakas, their faces and all are very unique and you can't simply think of them as a bunch of notes. Atana is another good example. Uh, so what I, uh, what I mean by that is, uh, uh, so um, if I take Kananda Bhairavi, right? Uh, so it's a gani gama pada pa sa sa ni da pa ma ga ni sa sort of that's uh, if I have to plug it into a scale. So I can't, I, I cannot think of it like I can't 
can't do that i mean it's weird to me i mean it's just weird to even attempt it so that is like me thinking of it phrase by phrase it doesn't work that way uh, i mean sorry note by note i mean now now phrase by phrase would be uh, that's when on the very least visible at least to me uh, so i'm already gone to the higher reach that's the phrase it, i'm not thinking uh, okay i have to restrict myself to only the lower octave first I, it doesn't work uh, that way in some of these ragas so so this uh, so if you notice i mean gnb's uh, 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 approach to this works uh, for really well for these note by note sort of raga scalar or some of these ragas which can be viewed in a scalar fashion um i think there's a different way to approach uh, these rakti ragas or what i calling the phrase ragas or the older ragas which have uh, developed very organically and from various sources uh, folk and uh, odavars and like so so many sources dance music so many things so um so we listen to one um, example of that um uh, sir varali yeah uh, before that i'll just want to yeah. say a couple of things uh, see raga alapna as we said is to expand on the raga at the same time uh, we will later on see it will also be a vehicle for showing your virtuosity that is uh, in case of vocal to show how much briga how much voice control oh. you have how how much in the higher reaches you can go how low can your voice go and all this the best thing is if you can package all this into a very aesthetic sense without being too obvious that will be very good uh, but uh, some some sometimes the artist wants to showcase their virtuosity so not uh, uh, it is not bad if they uh, do that same way with an instrumentalist uh, they also can showcase their virtuosity uh, in terms of their control of the instrument one other way of approaching to a raga is also to create a certain sort of a mood we spoke about this in uh, nerval also here uh, especially the initial movement of varali which semangudi sings he tries to create a, a kind of a mood uh, set a kind of a mood in varali uh, so we listen to this uh, and as meera pointed out uh, this may not be the uh, note by note development right it's a more organic uh, development here yeah mira you can play Yeah. <laughs> 
If you saw uh, here, uh, it was not like uh, Samangudi was trying to explore the raga in all dimensions or something like that. But uh, there was a certain mood, right? And uh, somehow, uh, when he went to the uh, higher reaches, like uh, Mira pointed out, uh, he, he set a certain mood. And throughout this alapana, he had maintained the same mood of Varadi. You know, very difficult to uh, exactly tell what I mean by that mood. But uh, 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 if you listen to it a few times, you'll understand that uh, a, a certain color uh, he puts and he maintains the whole color throughout the alapana. And here, that seems to be his aim rather than showing you every possible dimension of Varali. That's how I read this uh, Raga alapana. Yeah, Mira. Right. Uh, yeah, that's it's, it's a good uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so I'm guess I've not heard this track fully, but I'm guessing he spends some time doing Nerval and sings Swaras. So again, uh, depends on how much you want to explore and what you want to explore it with. It can be equal proportions of Alapana, Nerval, Kalpana Swara, that sort of thing. So. Um, one thing I want to point out here is uh, um, there was one particular phrase somewhere in the middle, I don't remember the time there, where uh, the violinist kind of cuts in between. He's not yet finished the phrase. Okay. Uh, I mean, these things happen, but uh, that kind of uh, opened up the fact that okay, he's singing a Nadaswaram type uh, phrase there. So, uh, So that sort of thing, right? Uh, uh, so the violinist probably cut, thought, expected it to end somewhere in the middle. So this phrase by uh, this, um, since this is a more organic sort of thing, it becomes a little harder to predict where he's going to end it. Uh, and also it, he brings in, like Sir mentioned, uh, uh, Nadaswaram has a lot of these organic, or like these, you know, very uh, uh, free-flowing uh, sort of uh, an approach to raga development. So he uses some of those. I, I've seen, uh, uh, in my view, Semanguri Mama does that uh, quite frequently. Uh, they all grew up on a uh, diet of Nadaswaram listening. So I'm sure that's there. Uh, so uh, to I will segue into the next uh, uh, point about Nadaswaram here. Uh, so, Nadaswaram Raga development, uh, okay, one thing is you may notice uh, Tawil starting to play somewhere in the middle or at the start. Um, there is no rhythm why they are playing Tawil. That is just to give them a break. It's a very demanding instrument, the Nadaswaram. Uh, I don't know if there's any other reason. I do not know. This is my own interpretation. So, uh, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll listen to quickly two Todis uh, that are there in this uh, Thing. So notice how he uh, uh, plays two very different thodis, Rajarat um, again a raga which is known to us. Uh, I'll play till a bit of the second thodi, so this will be a bit uh, four, four and a half minute times. Oh, in fact, uh, Thank you. 
so many continuous, so long continuous phrases. Little bit of this, let's listen to. Yeah, so if you uh, read this, uh, you'll, as Mira pointed out, the long, long phrases, some of which are almost impossible to reproduce uh, vocally. So, as Mira mentioned earlier, Samangudi derives a lot. I heard uh, even Seshu Gopalan sing like this. In Varali, also, you would have seen Samangudi singing some breathless phrases. Or sometimes I would call them semi-breath phrases, right? I mean, they take a very small breath and continue the phrase. And uh, Mira demonstrated to you why the violinist sort of got confused that he's going to end. But Samangudi continues. So Rajaratnam Krile was a master. And uh, Nadaswaram probably is an instrument which has been sort of uh, invented mainly for Ragalapna, you can say. I mean, I don't think that was in their mind, but... 
the nadaswaram as an instrument is so wonderfully suited to this uh, free flowing raga alapana and not only rajaratnam was definitely the master and the greatest then uh, his disciple karguru charnachalam and uh, later day you know uh, vidwans up to uh, that's very uh, recently discovered uh, pillapan the nadaswaram vidwans when they are good and they play the raga alapana it's of a different class uh, though uh, when they play the kirtana the tight structure of the kirtana somehow uh, would uh, not be so appealing in an adhaswaram is what is my opinion of course uh, i'm not saying they don't play well but the instrument is much more suited to alapana and a more free flowing form than to a extremely structured form so if you look at veena on the other hand veena is so well suited for a structured uh, form like a tanam or a, a kriti and veena has its own challenges when you come to raga alapana because there are a lot of uh, discrete parts but anyway i will leave that more to meera because she is the instrumentalist she knows uh, uh, much better uh, as i said uh, uh, nadaswaram is something which you should listen to uh, when it comes to raga alapana and lot of vocalists have taken inspiration from the nadaswaram yeah meera all right maybe uh, to uh, add to sir's point uh, nadaswaram music came from the temple sort of uh, thing so where time is not that much of a constraint as in when there are utsavams they have to probably play all night and i mean and so that free flowing uh, unbounded sort of thing stemmed probably from there and you have to play to the big audience right temple so big temples so uh they you have to throw your uh, sound as such it's a very loud instrument so uh it's it's amazing and like raga alapna suits that very well uh which is uh, i would encourage all of you to listen to a lot of nadaswaram it's pretty amazing anyway so uh to talk about veena yes uh, it is a plucked instrument right so it has that uh, discreteness so maybe when quickly listen to balachandra sir Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, this is Anand by Ravi. Yeah, one one disclaimer sort of thing. I have not heard this, but I am just going to mention it. There, uh, Balachandra sir uh, uh, actually tried to minimize the discreteness by coming up with a new sort of technique, which uh, I think it's called string pulling. And Jayanti Kumaresh also uh, uh, is inspired by that technique. So. uh there's is in my opinion more continuum based than many other uh, styles of veena but we can listen to all sorts of styles it's all music nice music but yeah <laughs> times the string had to be plucked if you notice the string uh, tuck tuck i mean that break happens there notice it now all this is those endings which meera talked about he was ending on the same notes hmm. <laughs> uh, 
I'll stop that there. So if you notice, uh, he starts with the small, uh, there's a lot of small phrases that they use simply because of the, uh, maybe the limitation of the instrument. So, each of these uh, phrases, but quite uh, short, instead of, this will come in uh, vocal or an artist with ease, but not so much. He has uh, pioneered that string pulling. He's actually pushed the boundary of how much you can play in a vena very nicely. So Balachandar sir is awesome that way. Um, but yeah, we'll have to move on. We don't have too much time left. Um, sir, uh, anything you uh, want to specifically mention and play? Mm, uh, no, no, nothing very uh, specific. Uh, uh, you can uh, play maybe uh, the Voleti one where we can show mm -hmm. how slowly he develops. Or you can play actually just for their uh, uh, newness. I'm not sure if they heard it, but why don't we play MD Ramadan and Arabi mm -hmm. so that they know Arabi and uh, they can see. Sure. Uh, I think slightly. Please give an intro to MDR. Yeah. Uh, see, MD Ramnathan was uh, a very excellent musician, but uh, he was, uh, he always used to sing in a very, very bass voice. Okay. And he had a very slow style of uh, singing, although he could sing fast, but uh, he had a very, very, very slow style of singing. And he had a very unique way of doing Raga Alapana as well. So this is uh, uh, Raga Alapana of Arabi. And you can hear his very bass voice and the way he very unhurriedly uh, develops Arabic. Yeah, uh, it takes a bit of getting used to his style, style and mannerisms, but uh, you may like it. was again uh, sort of a phrase by phrase uh, development by uh, MD Ramnathan. It takes, as uh, Meera says, some time to get used to his uh, style of singing. But I have known people who got very fascinated by MDR and 
sort of swear that they don't listen to anybody other than MDR type of thing. So he has a very cult following, uh, if you can say that. And uh, if you had heard Arabis uh, so wonderfully, the Arabi comes out also in this case. Um, yeah, it's getting close to 8 o'clock. Uh, Meera, you want to say something? And then I think Ramji is asking you an important question. How do you uh, teach uh, students to sing Alapanai? <clears throat> okay. I can tell you how I was taught because uh, I have never ventured into teaching Alapanai to anyone. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you the struggles that I faced while learning. That's probably a, a, that will be more illustrative. But before that, I want to quickly uh, address one another thing. Um, people talk about singing for a kriti like uh, you, uh, there is this mixed opinion about this some uh, schools of thought say if a particular kriti say it has a slower pace or if it starts in a higher octave or uh, it does not contain a particular note uh, beyond the higher octave say the kriti is structured only till the upper re or something uh, people say you should keep that in mind and sing your alapana with the spirit of the kriti in mind. So, for example, uh, if it does not reach the higher ga or something, for some reason the composer composed it that way, say, uh, your raga alapana should also not go to that. So, it shouldn't be a generic exploration of the raga, but a very kriti oriented sort of thing. And I've seen people also talk, uh, uh, if, if somebody sings an alapana, right, uh, say Karahara Priya. Uh, they, for example, they they can guess. Okay, okay, he's gonna sing Chakkani Raja. But uh, I always wondered how do they do that. Some people say it's because of the pace of it, the length of it, and also some of the phrases uh, that they borrow from the Kriti itself and uh, sing it within the uh, Alapan. I've heard all of these as a student, people, uh, and also as a listener. I've seen people talk about all this. These are all interesting things. Some people follow it, some people do not. And always the the raga need not, you know, kind of end in the lower octave. There are a few cases where people will end it in the higher octave. So, this is the Anupalavi of Moksha Mugalada. People start the Kriti there and then they come to Moksha Mugalada. So, they're singing Alapana, they will end it in the higher octave and then start because it kind of gives a nice continuity that way. So these sort of things are small things that you may want to be aware of. Um, that's about it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So you want to say something? No, no. I think uh, you had to answer the other question on how you were taught. But I'll first answer one which uh, Teja has asked. What makes an alapana a good or interesting one? Again, uh, this is a question which is, you know, uh, the managers are uh, will answer in any company. It depends, right? <laughs> That's how. Uh, because it depends on the listener. Um, uh, some uh, listeners uh, want uh, the display of virtuosity. Uh, in in uh, even Rajaratnam's Thodi, in the first uh, Thodi that you heard, there are some places are absolutely brilliant virtuosity. But... Uh, to some years, they'll say it's brilliant virtuosity, but at that point, I cannot hear Thodi. So there are always conflicting things on this. So some may say Ala Alapana is good if it is soaked in the Ragabhava. Uh, some may say, I want to also hear the vocal range of the artist. Some may say, hey, this is too slow. Uh, why are they not putting in some more vrigas, mm -hmm. more faster uh, phrases. That's the reason why we have multiple artists singing multiple ways and having multiple fan clubs, right? At least and, uh, earlier mm -hmm. there were no fan clubs. Nowadays they are, I think. So I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have different uh, people liking different alapanas basically for this reason. So um, as I said, some may want those fast phrases, like if GNB is singing those fast phrases, um, some would love that and some would love the fast phrases of uh, Rajaratnam Pillai. Some would love the other part of Rajaratnam Pillai where he's playing those long phrases which mm -hmm. is soaked in Ragabhava, uh, where there is a combination of virtuosity and the Raga. So to each their own, you can say that. So uh, uh, what may be very interesting to one, like uh, somebody is playing a violin and, uh, you know, and they are doing some real, uh, very, very difficult to do type of a thing. 
uh, some people would say wow this is absolutely brilliant but some others would say why do you want to do this uh, you are losing the raga there uh, so you know as i said uh, different strokes for different people so uh, the only thing is uh, well i guess uh, if expectation is something you ensure that expectation is fulfilled if not that those people get bored that's all i can say that's how you keep it interesting yeah Right. Yeah. However, the approach or your scale, whether it's slow, whatever, the, whatever, whichever one sir mentioned, uh, I, again, at the end of the day, uh, um, yeah, like uh, TMK mentioned this, mentions this in a few uh, like terms of his. Uh, are you feeling connected to the Raga as an artist? Uh, are you able to see magic somewhere? So, I mean, it's a very you know, abstract sort of concept, but um, as a a uh, musician i'm able to uh, relate to what he's saying um, instead of just following a template uh, or sort of thing uh, there are points when where you can unexpectedly hit uh, very beautiful moments or phrases in a raga like i said it's very abstract so let me not really drill into that um one more uh, quick thing is um people have also picked up uh, small ragas like revati desh sindhu bhairavi some of these are borrowed from hindustani like we saw sindhu bhairavi and all so people have explored these also in detail so mlv have added a revati of hers uh, she does a brilliant job of it and tns of course is known for picking all these hard ragas and also exploring them uh, apart from our own uh, ragas so uh feel free to explore uh, we've added quite a bit in the playlist but this is like an endless ocean because pretty much everybody sings alapana uh, listen to nadaswaram violin uh, quick thing about violin is uh, the continuity is possible there unlike uh, veena because of the presence of the bow and we are also influenced a lot by nadaswaram as well so that's that um moving on how our students start to sing alapana how i was taught was uh, Uh, first there are a few key uh, phrases that you need to hit so if you're uh, improvising uh, on uh, say you're doing alapana in shankara varnam uh, uh, you, first thing is you shouldn't sound like kalyani and you should sound you should trying to stay within the boundary of chakra varnam becomes the foremost uh thing that you are you have to watch out for first and so as a result uh usually the teacher sings or plays a few phrases for you to repeat so you get an idea of how uh it moves and how the gum so the gamka becomes so important here we spoke about gamkas in an earlier session so randomly throwing gamkas will uh, sometimes land you in trouble or land you in some other raga so extricating yourself out of it will be a problem so so basically a student needs to know the framework of how to this thing and one more thing for the tadari nana what i've heard one explanation is if you're singing just a uh, akaram right uh, 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 there is no The, the, I don't have any hold. Like I mean, there is no punch or anything I can give. So da da da. Instead of ah, the, you see how uh, it's very slippery if I sing it as ah, right? So that's probably why da da da. Instead of ah, so that's one reasoning I've heard. So these sort of things they teach you when they are uh, teaching you how to do ala panai. But beyond the point, listening, listening is so important. Uh, that's how all of our uh, manodharma grew and uh, yeah listening just as i say keep listening the same applies to us all of us students practitioners and all that so that's that yeah. yes uh, that's also true uh, teja yeah you utter the consonants uh, tadari nana it takes on if you uh, look at uh, the north indian music uh, they use akaram a lot more actually they they don't do the Uh, they they come back to the uh, kayal beginning that gives them a bit of a, um, a rest place but uh, that they have a rhythm associated when they do the alapna if you look at hindustani mm-hmm. therefore they have a cycle so they may go one cycle and then start singing the pallavi they have just the pallavi and uh, they may go to the bandesh uh, they land there then uh, you know they get some rest then they go sometimes three or four cycles then they get some space and as meera says if you do just the akaram uh, you may also not get the punch whereas there though they are 
sort of singing the alapana in the sense they are doing the manodharma they still get the punch because they have to land on the uh, beginning of that tala so correct correct that could be one way yeah yeah and also they the way their gamakas are structured are a little different if you see them doing alap some of them i'm not not an expert but from what i've heard you will see a lot of uh, uh, that sort of movement where there's more shaking right so that maybe that gives a bit more uh, hold hold on uh, sort of thing. I, i don't know and as, as well as the interest is also there because they get a lot of jarus that uh, where you uh, slide down from one note to the other that gives uh, uh, that keeps the interest alive uh, so that also may be one of the reasons right yeah <clears throat> cool so yeah i think this is a good one um, yeah i think we are about uh, we have passed our time uh, any other questions guys and uh, um, yeah uh, ragalapana again as i said uh, is something which uh, you must keep listening and slowly uh, you will find that you end up waiting for it in a concert in the initial days i i can tell you that whenever somebody start singing ragalapana i was like come on get done with this i want to know which kriti you are singing because i knew the kriti and i was nerval was interesting the swaras uh, kalpana swaram was interesting and all that so many a times when we are very new to carnatic music uh, we all love to uh, tell us skip the ragalapana but uh, <laughs> once uh, you start listening and you go uh, to lot of concerts then you slowly start waiting for the alapna uh, if he sings two or three uh, krithis one after the other you'll start thinking come on man stop this sing the alapna right so it changes it's like uh, i keep telling it's like you know the brinjal type of thing you know when a young nobody likes it you know? uh, one uh, uh, marker that you got old is when you start liking brinjal Uh, that's my thing <laughs> yeah. i i i really know that that was my <laughs> experience i know others can have differently i just I just think i'll ever eat brinjal sir <laughs> yeah that's what as i am still young uh, so it really <laughs> that i the day, day day you tweet that today i made brinjal curry will be your mood to the next level <laughs> yeah 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 totally <laughs> okay awesome. i think yeah thank you all i think we have uh, uh, done for today and uh, we'll catch up next week thank you thanks everyone bye yeah